But Africa doesn't need strong men, it needs strong institutions. idea that by virtue of our common humanity, no matter where we come from or what we look like, we are all born equal, touched by the grace of God. Every person has worth. Every person matters. Every person deserves to be treated with decency and respect. It took a revolution of the spirit over many centuries to open our eyes to the dignity of every person. And around the world, generations have struggled to put this idea into practice in laws and in institutions. A half century into this independence era, it is long past time to put aside old stereotypes of young people with no jobs and stifled voices can fuel instability and disorder. Africa's progress will depend on unleashing economic growth, not just for the few at the top, but for the many, because an essential element of dignity is being able to live a decent life. That begins with a job. I believe Africa's progress will also depend on democracy. We all know what the ingredients of real democracy are. They include free and fair elections, but also freedom of speech and the press, freedom of assembly. Yet at this very moment, these same freedoms are denied to many Africans. And I have to proclaim, democracy is not just formal elections. When journalists are put behind bars for doing their jobs, or activists are threatened as governments crack down on civil society, then you may have democracy in name, but not in substance. And I'm convinced that nations cannot realize the full promise of independence until they fully protect the rights of their people.
democratic progress is also at risk when leaders refuse to step aside when their terms end. The law is the law. And no one person is above the law, not even the president. The point is, I don't understand why people want to stay so long. Especially when they've got a lot of money. When a leader tries to change the rules in the middle of the game just to stay in office, it risks instability and strife. And this is often just the first step down a perilous path. Madiba, like George Washington, forged a lasting legacy, not only because of what they did in office, but because they were willing to leave office and transfer power peacefully. was a big welcome, it was a big relief. And sometimes you'll hear a leader say, well, we're, I'm the only person who can hold this nation together. <laughs> if that's true, then that leader has failed to truly build their nation. Jawara has been here for 30 years. For 30 years he has been a special friend of the British authorities. He spends most of his time, time in Britain playing golf at the, at the expense of the Gambian state. He has assets in Britain and our, our investigations into corruption have shown that most of the money stolen from the Gambian coffers are deposited in British banks. And we are talking of 20,000 barrels of crude oil a day from 1983 to uh, 1990. These Gambians were not aware of this. And a, a, a limited liability company called the Gambia Oil Company, which when you mention to Gambia and they stare at you as if they have seen a ghost, was established in the Gambia. All the managing directors were British. Members of the board of directors were British. And None of the proceeds of that crude oil, the total of which amounted to over 16 million barrels of crude oil, were ever deposited in the government treasury. The company that was uh, contracted to trade with the oil is called a civil, uh, civil trading, a company registered in Latin America, Panama City in Panama. So perhaps the AFPRC has come up with a timetable which is not acceptable to the West. You know, the West has made it loud and clear that an acceptable timetable should not be beyond two years. And of course, we know that the AFPRC timetable is four years. So perhaps it could also stem from the fact that the timetable which the AFPRC has announced on 
October 24th. The timetable they say is long. We have, we've charted it out because we don't want to create an atmosphere of instability. To try people for corruption that has been going on for 30 years, you cannot do it in six months. You cannot do it in 12 months. Taking into consideration that it has to go through a due process of law. This is one thing. And we did not just come to make a clean sweep for, uh, of Jara's regime just for another corrupt politician to come in. We want to make sure that by the time we leave, there are concrete structures that will give, let Gambians know their rights as Gambians, rights that cannot be, 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 be denied be a by anybody. That can be done within maximum two years. Let them clean up the system and go back to barracks. Then, when history is going to be written, when we are going to write history tomorrow, then we'll see that there was a group of five soldiers who came to rescue us. Of course, if they want to enjoy the, the, the sweetness of power, they can stay. They can stay there. But at the at the end of the day, they will also realize that power can be sweet, but it can also be bitter. It's 1906 GMT. I'm Frederick Dove. This is Focus on Africa from the BBC World Service. Opposition protests today on the streets of Gambia's largest town, Serekunda. Release Solo Sandeng, dead or alive, the protesters chanted as they marched through Serekunda. It's alleged that Abrima Solo Sandeng, the national organizing secretary of the main opposition United Democratic Party, died in custody after being detained on Thursday by security officers. He'd been leading a protest at which participants called for electoral reform ahead of elections in December, in which the country's long-standing president, Yahya Jame, is running for another term in office. Today, following further protests, UDP leader Hussein Udabo and other politicians were also reportedly arrested. Santu Ture is a spokesman for the UDP here in Britain. We received a message early yesterday evening that uh, Solo Sunday died under custody through torture and a lady called Fatima Dajawara is also allegedly dead. You say you received these reports, they're unconfirmed. Who did those reports come from? These are from the security sources that are willing to remain anonymous. And they even said uh, where Solo was buried, that he was hurriedly buried in a village called Tanje, that is in the coastal area. So the body has not been released, it's, it's already been buried, according to these sources that you have? That's right. Normally, Jamet does not return bodies. Uh, you can remember the nine executed prisoners in 2012, he's still keeping the bodies. Now, Amnesty International, for example, has called for an investigation today. Do you think any such investigation will take place? Unless we continue with our protest, we continue to galvanize our base to a demand an investigation. But ordinarily, he will not hit to any demands because he feels he's above the law. He is the law. And the other UDP member that you mentioned, who, who was also taken into detention on Thursday? Manding call. Manding call. Manding call. Yalo kufula levije. Mano anin dinko. Sama ye demonstration oke. Nsifa kon feto fokol te bolaje. Ntele ngako. But if you cross my line, you will never cross somebody's line again. I will not send the police. I'll send the army and wipe you out and see who is going to talk about it. Altogether, it's 25 youth leaders that uh, were arrested, three women and uh, 22 men. All of them, their whereabouts are unknown. Some are saying they are in the maximum notorious mile two prisons. Uh, others are saying they are in his usual hidden prisons. There were protests today in Serekunda following the announcement of the death of Solo Sandbeng. There have been more arrests today at these protests, including the UDP leader, Hussein Udabo. Is that right? Yeah, that is right. Uh, he was arrested along with five other executive members. And are the whereabouts of these people known? Not yet, no. Is all this part of the build-up to the elections later this year in which President Jame is going for re-election? That is right, because the youths were demanding for electoral reform because the Gambian electoral law and the constitution demand that at the age of 65, you cannot contest. And also the voting system is a force past the post, where even if Jame win by one vote, he's declared the winner, we want the second rounds. So this is what the youths were going about, trying to call for reforms and trying to demand that Jame and his um, uh, enablers listen to the opposition. That was why they were arrested.
and Mr. Dabo said that was no reason to arrest anybody. Following the death announced of, of Solo Sandeng and the arrest of Hussein Dabo and the others, what is the UDP's line now? Will there be further protests? So long as the youths are kept, even if they release Mr. Dabo, we will organize further protests. I was speaking there to Santu Toure, UK spokesman for the UDP. Fight for your right. When we succumb to these artificial divisions of faith or sect or tribe or ethnicity, then even the most awful abuses are justified in the minds of those who are thinking in those ways. And in the end, abusers lose their own humanity as well. Nelson Mandela taught us to be free is not merely to cast off one's chains, but to live in a way that respects and enhances the freedom of others. I know that somebody with new energy and new insights will be good for my country. There's a saying, and I believe it is true, if we sacrifice liberty in the name of security, we risk losing both. The march of history shows that we have the capacity to broaden our moral imaginations. We're all one tribe. And yet so much of the suffering in our world stems from our failure to remember that, to not recognize ourselves in each other. We think because somebody's skin is slightly different, or their hair is slightly different, or, or they speak a different language, that it justifies somehow us treating them with less dignity. And that becomes the source of so many of our problems. And we think somehow that we make ourselves better by putting other people down. Every one of us is equal. Every one of us has worth. Every one of us matters. And when we respect the freedom of others, we are all more free. Your dignity depends on my dignity, and my dignity depends on yours. Imagine if everyone had that spirit in their hearts. Imagine if governments operated that way, supporting democracy that gives citizens their say. Advancing the security and justice that delivers peace. Respecting the human rights of all people. These are the keys to progress. Nobody should be president for life. Nobody should be president for life. Nobody should be president for life. leadership